Welcome all to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. My name is Alex. I'll be your host. It's Sunday, September 4, 2022. And today's advice, today's episode is coming from a uh, from a little post on r slash career guidance. It's a uh, subreddit that I like to frequent and um, find what folks need help with, folks are posting. It might be guidance in and of itself, <clears throat> or it might serve to form some guiding principle based on an error that was committed, you know, in the course of their work or in the course of just applying or interviewing. Uh, folks just like to relay their personal experience, whether or not it develops into something professional. I mean, take this as a free professional consultation if you would like. If you would like to set something up that's personalized, by all means, reach out. You know how to find us. We're on Instagram. We're on Patreon, Corporate Cowboys, the podcast and whatnot. So this question is asking here. Uh, let me just start the timer because I'm going to make this another 30 minutes free consult and, uh, you know, just do it moving because it's been a while and I'm currently in an area where I can talk at a lower volume, but I'll be sure to speak clearly and uh, get my points across succinctly. So this job is asking this job, <laughs> this post, this post is asking about a job. Actually, it's it's uh, topic is leaving a job is leaving a job after six or eight months a huge red flag and it's asking for advice this was posted about a couple hours ago and already it has a limited limited commentary on it about six comments and I will read through the facts here uh, because, uh, I mean, I don't read them in advance. Sometimes I will uh, I will look over the facts if there are enough. I tried to keep it just shy of a too long didn't read, but I do recognize, I recognize that the longer a post is, the more context and nuance it tends to impart. Um, and in in the span of a 30 minute consult that can be somewhat difficult but it's not unheard of where the first 15 minutes maybe even the first 20 minutes if we really are pushing it it with a uh, client consultation the first 15 to 20 minutes anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes are going to be just getting an informational download from the client right we want to know most all of the contextual facts and circumstances that inform the client's situation, the client's position in relation to corporate, in relation to their, uh, in relation to their career, where they are in their career path. <clears throat> that being said, uh, the the last fifteen minutes, I'm, I try to the first half is going to be you know brief introductions, and then. Uh, you know, familiarizing, uh, getting familiar with the client's situation and analyzing it um, as an as an active listener, not so much passive listener. As an active listener, I do want to, uh, at times, either ask or write down write down follow up questions. Um, or just any questions with follow-up questions in order to pose to the client and uh, uh, elicit more information from them, draw out more information from them in order to provide them with a, a, a wholesome, a holistic, holistic analysis based on the information that we've been, we've been provided in that span of time. Now, that being said, let's begin here because <clears throat> I'm already burning time. <laughs> so 
I've only been at my current job three months. That's one, two, three, three months. So I've only been at my current job three months. I work as an analyst and so far the job is not what I anticipated. They have lost over half the department in two years. And in parentheses here they put and eight people of a 35 person department since January alone. And it's a government job, so that kind of turnover is uncommon. They have been majorly back and forth about the hybrid remote schedule, which is not at all the impression I was given when I signed on. I live one and a half hours away and never intended to move there, nor was told I needed to. Quite frankly, I don't want to. But... The CIO, which is the chief information officer, has been endlessly pressuring me to do so. The constant shifts to the schedule have caused me a lot of physical and mental stress, and it's already taking a toll. I've also been thrust into multiple projects with no training or context, and was just left to fend for myself. Which, given I have minimal experience, has been very draining. Damn. <laughs> Within the first three months, they've already been having to hunt wolves by themselves. <laughs> Shit. I mean, I don't know what, what governmental department, what department of the government they're working with, but um, sounds like quite the fucking crash course for just three months when technically they're probably still on, on a probationary period. <laughs> Man, it's too bad you can't, uh, too bad you can't complain against the gov, right? <clears throat> I mean, you can, but it's very tiptoe-ish, much more cloaks and daggers. The CIO, the chief information officer, and much of upper management are huge micromanagers, and the culture is just kind of gross. There is a lot of drama and narcissistic personalities talking crap behind each other's back, and my coworker and all people micro and my coworker of all people micromanages me and is super arrogant and thinks she always knows better than I do. She's very rude in how she communicates this. Granted, I'm quite new, but she basically refuses to back off and let me do my job. I'm also paid probably 10 to $15 an hour less than what is standard market rate for this position at entry level. I've already started saving job postings to begin applying, but how bad will this look to future employers if I do secure something and leave in a few months? The problem is my degree is unrelated to my current position, and though I have a certificate and relevant coursework, I'm afraid six months of experience won't get me hired anywhere else. I think I was only hired here because they were actually desperate given they have trouble keeping good employees. They have trouble keeping good employees. Hmm. Oh, and there is a too long, didn't read, too long, didn't read. Can't handle work culture and poor management. Want to get out ASAP. How will this look to future employers? You see, you see why I, I try to avoid the too long, didn't reads? Because I do lo- the too long, didn't reads <clears throat> never, never have enough context. I mean, I, I get... That, that, that it's just to summarize the entire uh, posting into one or two sentences and but it, it's it's not even it's not even a paraphrase it it's literally just a a distillation a distillation of of maybe the most broad points and not even the most broad points like the most contentious points and they're personal points they're not too long didn't reads uh, from the reader's point of view, they're too long didn't it reads from the poster's point of view. But that's neither here nor there. Continuing. <clears throat> so, in starting our analysis, what we want to hone in on is the fact that they... Um, work for the government right so they work for the government and it's it's not stated here at least we aren't told what department of the government 
uh, they work for what industry it is they interact with, um, what type of, you know, what regulatory body it is that, uh, if, if it is regulatory or just, just <clears throat> what exactly they do within the framework of the government. <clears throat> the reason that's important is because, uh, how they were trained, what kind of certification they got, their knowledge, their educational background, their experience, this all goes towards informing their next step, which is what they're asking for here. They're asking for advice on, on, on their next step and, and how to move ahead. So my belief is putting myself in this position, right? And not myself, Alex, but a corporate cowboy in this position, how they get out. Obviously, you already want to start looking for jobs, saving those job postings to apply to later or start applying now. I mean, don't don't fucking wait. What you want to do is polish that resume, right? And on the resume is where you're going to spin, spin the experience that you had before you went into that position and how you were further able to develop it over the course of that six months. If anything, you want to treat that six months as if it were an internship, right? As if, as if you had been brought on on a temporary status regardless. Now, it's going to be not a hard sell. It won't be a hard sell. It'll be a soft sell to the next prospective employer, which I'm assuming you're hoping has has a better has a better culture the reason reason it's going to be a soft sell is because yes you will only have been there six months <clears throat> you are relatively new and um and you are doing it for 10 to 15 dollars below market rate now that also depends on what your future employer what kind of organization your future employer is if your future employer is a nonprofit or another governmental or non-governmental organization, right? Uh, they might not be expecting to pay you uh, that ten to fifteen dollar difference uh, in in keeping with the market, because you know if it's if it's still government related, uh, I'm not trashing those individuals who have government positions. I recognize that some are useful, some are necessary in, main, in, in keeping and maintaining an operational government infrastructure. <clears throat> but by and large, uh, government positions for their stability and for their uh, health benefits and pension plan tend to pay less than market value. You want market value. That's something not something that's negotiated. That's something private. That's something that you're gonna have to go out there and and sell. Sell your resume. Sell your C V. That's gonna have to be something that you go out there and hustle up and negotiate to be able to secure the wage, the 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 pay rate that you are hoping to get, that you are looking for, that you are seeking, right? That being said, um, as, as far as it showing up as a red flag, I think avoiding avoiding it being a red flag is is you recognizing and uh, posing it to uh, to your prospective employer exactly why it wasn't a red flag. I mean, you want to frame it as it having been a positive for you, right? Not not because of uh, work culture or whatever, right? You've been on there three months. I understand it's been increasingly stressful because um, you haven't been trained. You've been put on projects without the uh, without the administrative support that you feel those projects warrant. That those projects require. <clears throat> that being said, uh, that doesn't. I should stop saying that being said. I don't know where I, where I picked that up. But that doesn't mean 
that those moments of stress haven't provided some clarity, some semblance of clarity, right? Where life is striking down on you while the iron is hot, if that makes sense. Even even if it is, you know, trauma-based learning, right? If it's been traumatic, if, if it's been stressful, that's good because what help what has helped you survive through those projects in that span of three to six months is necessarily going to be what you take and spin as professional development, right? You're still alive. Every day above ground is a fucking great day. So what you learn along the way is what your next employer is going to want to see. Now, you don't want to speak a shitty work culture into existence. So obviously you're going to refrain. You would like to refrain from <clears throat> I guess alleging that the work culture you're leaving was shitty. You just want to say that. Uh you 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 want to say in a sense that you were only passing through to develop professionally and you saw opportunities outside that were not being personally satisfied for you while you worked for that government entity. And so now you find yourself, and, and, and even if that opportunity is literally more money, all right? And now you find yourself pursuing those opportunities outside in the market. So, you, I mean, yeah, you, you're back on the market and that's why you find yourself <clears throat> interviewing. And that's never a bad thing. If you're constantly interviewing... Uh, it. I feel like folks should be consistently interviewing, not constantly, but consistently, like every, every couple months, maybe every quarter. Uh, I've heard of folks doing it every two years, so like every six months, every six months to a year, and uh, they tend to time it around you know review time, uh, with their or with their organizations. And in doing so, they are aware of what the going rate is for their position or something. Maybe there is something better out there that they're willing to lateral from and leave their organization for. But again, uh, three to six months, if you know how to finesse it, if you know how to spin it, that's going to be, it's going to require some time for you to meditate on and think on and plan on what it is you will be saying about your experience overall there and how that time frame, that three to six months period in time helped you develop, further develop professional skills that you now seek to bring on to your next employer. I think that's going to be uh, the, the best way <clears throat> of you doing that. I mean, because uh, you don't list this this poster here doesn't list anything else about their work history. So we don't know if they've been employed before, if they've you know if, if they have a history of working with with governmental organizations. Uh, <clears throat> not even what their industry is, but you know it says here that 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 they got some some certification and some coursework in in that field uh in, in that current position but who's to say the next position they're interviewing for is even one that's currently related it, it, it's something that is adjacent or or in, you know in a similar vein as what they're in because it says here their degree is unrelated to their current right so <clears throat> it could be a, a complete 180 not a 180 right it could be something like uh a 190 maybe like it, it's just hold on not a 190 is that a 190 mm, hold on see i caught myself in a little uh in a little tangent here where if the angles go from zero to 90, if anything from like zero to 45, that you're still going backwards, right? Anything from zero to 90, 90 would be straight ahead, right? 
I'm, I'm thinking of it as, or the, or the zero start at the top, right? Otherwise, we're then then we're talking negatives here. If we're if we're if we're talking, all right, that's gonna be another another episode. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna delve into that right now. But it could be something completely unrelated. The next position that they go off to interview for it could be something within their degree within within their degree field right so this certificate and this other coursework that they that sounds like they took on for their current position might not even be relevant anymore uh, so again I think brass tax it's going to come down to how you can best contextualize it given your resume given your prior professional experience because what a future employer wants to hear is how regardless of how long you were at a place right it could be temporary for all you know just treat it treat it as a paid internship you were there to pick up and go right and what the next employer wants to hear is that how you will improve their business how you will not so much improve but how you will add it to their business how you will contribute to their business you as an employee or as an independent contractor of some sort right regardless of what your employment agreement looks like but they want to know how you can add it to it and it, i mean it goes back to the old adage of wanting to be an asset and not a liability but that's ultimately what your future employer is going to want to hear I mean, it may or may not set off a flag with them like, well, is this person going to even stick around uh, six months or a year or five years, whatever, right? But that's all going to, that, that, that will all have to be negotiated when that bridge arrives to cross that you will all, you will have to cross that bridge when you get there because you still don't even know what jobs you're applying for. You haven't listed what industry it is that you work in, what field uh, of study you got your degree in, what the certificate is for and, and the relevant coursework for it, right? So without more of that, and I would definitely go into depth in, in, a, in a 30 minute consultation, I would have these questions and these follow-up questions for the client to know specifically what their qualifications were in and then these other uh uh what, what is it auxiliary what what these other auxiliary uh qualifications are for so what their degree is in and the auxiliary qualification because it sounds like they want a, they may want a position they may consider a position in the degree they studied for right but uh we don't we won't know with more, without more information but a future employer is going to want to know that you're going to at least be around a, to be a positive, a net positive, and not a net negative, not a fucking drag on the company, not a fucking drag on the corporation. They want you to be a positive. They want you to bring the vibes and bring the value, regardless for how long you'll be with them. You could be with them for fucking two weeks and make them millions. You could, you could be with them two weeks and make them millions, but we won't know that without additional factual uh, without additional facts to this. And, you know, those would come through questioning. Uh, the first comment here says, people make mistakes when accepting jobs and sometimes they need to move on. Now, if I see a string of this on your resume, I'll move on to the next candidate. Yeah, that's very aptly put. Uh, essentially, it's, it's uh, making a mistake by not vetting the company. So at the time of interview, the, the company, the, this fucking organization, it's just a, a government department, right? So when, when you're interviewing for an organization, any organization, realize that it isn't just them interviewing you and assessing and evaluating you. You also want to assess and evaluate them, what, what their work entails, their missions, their values, their culture there. And have some questions in mind that will help inform your decision as to whether or not 
they are they are also good employer candidates they're also good candidates to employ you and pay you what you're worth now uh, to this first comment, the original poster, the OP, replies, The last couple of jobs I had, I stayed for about a year, and then one for six months. But these were positions where I was so underpaid, I could barely survive. Minimum wage or just above, in parentheses there. Uh, they had no benefits, were not relevant to the field I wanted to be in, etc., they were just jobs I took during COVID because I could not find anything else and had just graduated. Not sure if that makes a difference. It, no, it doesn't. I feel uh, the the OP here has has already rationalized it to an extent by stating that their uh, minimum wage jobs, you know, at at minimum wage or just above, they have no benefits. So they they were literally underpaid, dead end jobs. Right. And this took place during COVID. I think COVID has been a blessing in disguise for a lot of professionals because it's allowed them to either exit a particular field or enter a particular field all by way of pivot, just by pivoting and, you know, and putting that uh, uh, putting that um, that cause, I guess, deflecting the cause onto COVID. But it's it's a, it's a convenience. It's it's a convenience cause, it's a convenience reason. I understand, but valid, and it's very legitimate. So, uh, having OP understand this and actually already putting the rationale together of what they would tell a prospective employer, you know, stating that it wasn't even in the in the field, relate. It wasn't in a, in a related field that they wanted to be working in. They already know how to contextualize it they just got to add a little bit more spin because this position the current position that they're in now isn't in the field that they want to be working in that's what it sounds like at least um but just that added spin of having been of, of having been developing professional skills while in their current position in order to continue looking outward into the field into their target field I think would uh, make some points, might ingratiate a potential employer to them. The second comment here says, I left the job after five months and still got many interview offers, but I know others that struggled. I don't think it's a huge flag anymore. I think eight or nine is almost a year. I see that a lot. Six months might be a little short try to make it at least eight or nine i think and they're, they're talking months so this commenter is recommending that the op stay in this position at least eight or nine months and honestly i feel like if the op's got his mindset that they want to start looking yeah maybe they should start looking and, and you know uh setting their affairs in order <laughs> setting their affairs in order for their exit um, and that could be at the six month mark if they are interviewing, right? But that doesn't mean that they can't be interviewing starting at the six month mark when they're shooting out applications. And they and, and they could be interviewing into through month eight and through month nine. And at the nine month at the ninth month exit, you know, uh, finally pull that uh, pull that eject lever and bounce out. Push that eject button and fucking bounce out. It's doable. It's possible. Yeah, obviously, um, length of time, duration looks good to a prospective employer. And the longer, the better. But then, you know, that, that, that might also be a red flag. Why they were in a position, say they were in an entry-level position for nine years. It makes you question whether or not, you know, something is wrong with this individual. That they had, what, they had no aspirations? They had no extracurriculars, baby? It, and this you want to highlight on your resume also extracurriculars if you had no extracurriculars to fill in the time such as i don't know additional training or additional coursework or uh, some type of involvement in the community community re relations community service even uh it, you know it, it begs the question whether this person might be an asset for the company or some type of liability in disguise <laughs> Uh, this, the third one here, I, I guess I can read them all. 
Uh, it's already been, it's about to be 30 right now, 30 minutes, but I will read the largest, the largest comment here. Boom. I left my government contracting job back in April after having started mid-November 2021. I couldn't take it anymore. There wasn't a mission anymore, and they literally only hired me to fill a seat in order to charge the army way more than what I was offered. For months, we were told we'd find out more about where the direction of our mission was going, but when they just kept pushing it back, but then, sorry, but then they just kept pushing it back. I worked in a cold, windowless office with crap internet. As the only female on a team of three older men, I'm 30. I, I'm 30, had just got out of the army after 10 years, and our team lead constantly made me feel stupid and treated me like I was 15. It took over a month for everyone to quote-unquote train me to which after one hour, it turned into just follow this guide, quote unquote. <laughs> when I was brand new and trying to do training courses for the company, for two days, the internet was down in our office. They wouldn't let me work from home to complete the courses because we had to have butts and seats except the team lead and other guy would dip out of them. I'm, I'm reading a little faster because it's fucking dragging. It's dragging a bit. Would dip out a majority of the day. One of the guys had spent... One of the guys spent half the shift Christmas shopping. Then they would still mark eight-hour days. And that's cool. You do you. But why is it okay for you to leave the office but not me when I'm trying to get work done? I could go on and on. Just wanted to let you know that I understand where you're coming from and that it's okay to leave something that doesn't feel right. When I left, I said, F it. I've, I'm done with government work. I'm going back to school. I did some home projects and traveling. And just a couple weeks ago, got offered a position for what I've been waiting for the last year. I've been offered three or four jobs in the last few months, but they were across the country away from my husband. Future employers don't care. I've even been honest with some of my interviewers of why I left. They don't care. This company I'm taking a job with is actually a subcontractor for my old company. They don't give a shit that I quit with the other people or even had a resume with info of my time there. Some... <laughs> Something better will come. Don't be scared to take the leap. Best of luck. That's that's actually, I guess that's a roundabout way of ending up with the same conclusion. Is that an employer, a future employer, your future employer won't care. Doesn't care about your past. Obviously, they want to see a resume and it's got to be truthful, right? You can't fucking just lie and make up a resume because if they start dialing up uh, your, your past employers or your uh, professional references, they're going to find out that something's uh, amiss, that something is fucked up, right? And that's not something you want to have looming over you. But yeah, this this poster is correct. This this uh, soldier is in the army, right? Yeah, this, this female soldier is right, was right in having left government work because of, uh, of the lack of direction. And it sounded like you know, lack of ethics, but who am I to complain? When you're on contract work, I've seen contracts go straight and I've seen contracts go bad. <laughs> uh, if, if you like this kind of content, don't hesitate to like, comment, share, share it with your homies, share it with your, uh, with your circle, with your professional circle. Um, you know, this is just, this is, Musings, musings from a corporate cowboy on how to better your position within corporate, whether or not you're in it already or you're outside trying to break in. Um, if you want to reach out directly, want to set something up professionally, by all means, you can do that. If, uh, if you think correspondence of some kind is in order, sure, send it. P.O. Box 332, wait, 3372, 3327. 3372 P.O. Box 3372 Rancho Cordova California 95741 and uh, obviously that gets checked regularly uh, sometimes not by me which is uh, uh, obvious I, I, I'm having issues with the box number now but uh, it, it is forwarded in a timely manner I'll be sure to receive it. I will consider it, make note of it, and um, 
you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to respond in a timely manner, of course. I'll be seeing you guys around. If you want to obviously shoot a donation to keep this operation non-profit, as it always will be, mm. you know, try to hold the corporate cowboys down. We appreciate the support. Have a nice weekend.